Because yeah. I'm gonna let this go crazy. You was definitely like chill on it. Yeah, what the fuck you do? Yeah. So, yeah. man, I'd have kicked it with Charleston and Dewberry and all them. That wasn't the last time I seen them, bro. I gotta ask about you know eighty five South man y'all y'all crazy like the All Star team bro yeah you DC Chico all the other absolutely cast um just just how did you whose idea was it to put that together because I was like damn this is jink when it when it first came out I said oh this is gonna work damn you really just don't want to give me credit for what I came up with that's what I'm asking uh, me you know who came up with it that's why you ask me <laughs> what is it that you want to know. <laughs> But nah, man, it started out, it was, because we were in Atlanta, it was me and DC, and uh, I knew I wanted to do some kind of like podcast, radio show, uh, something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just started putting stuff together, seeing who works, tried a few different people, then I finally hit DC, and then we went in and we locked in a few episodes, and I was like, yeah, this the one. And then, you know, between me, him, and Chico, we always like, First couple seasons, while and out, we always be all talking some shit, acting a fool. I'm like, bro, this the show right here. So put it together, and here we are. That's hard, bro, because you know it's like I said with real life street stars. It's literally me and three of my partners that we just grew up with. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's one thing to think something, but it's another thing to execute. Right. How hard was it to just really execute it and find the cameraman and find you know be consistent because that's a part of it. How hard right. was that? Sometimes it's like. People find you, you know what I'm saying. It, it works out better when you when you have people that want to do exactly what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You can always hire a cameraman, but do the cameraman really want to be the cameraman? You get what I'm saying. That's like that's point. one of the blessings that that came with it. Is we found people who did who did exactly what they wanted to be doing. You know what I'm saying. Like my man Craig right there. Shout out Craig. He didn't, he started out. He was. He was setting up the cameras. He was, you know what I'm saying? He was just getting in where he fit in. Be like, oh, this is what you do? You want to do the drone shit? You want to direct? You want to produce? Oh, go ahead. You got the green light. So it's just, that was the dope part of it. Yeah. Finding people, like, finding the audio dude who wanted to be the audio dude. You right. get what I'm saying? Sometimes you have a team of people, but people don't be where they want to be. Right. right. So that's, that's, the, that's what really pushed us to the next level, is having people in position in the position that they wanted to be in. Who do you feel was the most interesting guest on your show, on the 85 show? Mm, the most interesting? Yeah. Um, it's a few, bro. Like Snoop, Snoop got some great stories. And it don't matter how many interviews you see him on, he don't, he don't never run out of Snoop yeah. shit. He been <laughs> Snoop since the first day we saw him. Yeah. So he could just, he and the way he tell a story, is amazing. So Snoop, uh, T Pain, T Pain. Oh yeah, T Pain is a super fool, dope uh, to me, bro. Is um, that where you say he got two with us or some shit? What? what was yeah, it he, yeah. <laughs> T Pain. And I was like, what? T Pain <laughs> dropped a lot of lot of jewels in that interview. He talked about how Usher said he was disappointed in him and didn't like the music. Um, he he was the one that came on the show and had, and revealed that Michael Jackson does in fact have a deep voice. So after what? he, yeah, Michael Jackson, real voice was deep, deep in hell. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, so when he came out and said that, now you see all that. Um, Dallas Austin was, oh, yeah. was got some great stories. I mean, I love he when he was talking about living. Madonna had this castle that was haunted, this big <laughs> mansion that she wouldn't live in. And he said he spent the night over there and he heard all type of weird <laughs> But yeah, that was a good one. Um, what about Ross, man? Ross is very <laughs> What interesting. the fuck happened with Y'all boy Charleston White. Was I was going <laughs> to hey, hey, Charleston White, you know, he's, he's one of the people that came up through our uh, Say Cheese I know. platform. What the fuck happened to that interview, bro? Because it seemed like Atlanta just banded together and said, we're going to get this out of there. Why are you? Why are That's you what it looked that? like on the outside. I know, but I'm just saying, I saw all kind of comments online like, Tip made him take it down. Yeah. Boosie told him don't fuck with him. Like, yeah. Bro, didn't none of that shit happen, dog. Ain't nobody just got on the phone like, we. With Charles White? No, <laughs> no. But Atlanta do stick together, so it absolutely. Do, so it does. It it's one of those things. Ti did go online and was like, "Nah, we ain't 
with him. So and then all of a sudden you see big facts. But I feel like I'm the only one that actually understand Charleston White. Cause I got an uncle that's like 10 times worse than Charleston White, bro. So I'd be like, bro, y'all really let these, these y'all would not make it in Mississippi, bro. Cause there's hundreds. All the Mississippis talk just like that. I'm like, bro, my uncle would have you in tears if, if y'all really offended by this. You never thought about bringing your uncle on? He passed away. <laughs> bro, oh, if, if I would have no. had a show and brought him, I would, he, it would be me and him. It was, I wouldn't need nobody else because this is the most diabolical nigga you ever met, bro. I just did an episode where I told everybody when my grandma passed, he wore all her clothes. They thought I was just making up, bro. My auntie had to get on Facebook to confirm this, bro. Then she passed away. You know how somebody passed, you be trying to get rid, like, clean up and get this together. He was like, no, nah, leave me all that. I want all that. Man, that. that Wore my auntie jeans, my grandma jeans. Cause you know, women's jeans is wide in the waist and they get smaller on the way down, bruh. Like, so the legs, bruh. So they fit the waist. But like on his legs, they was hitting about right there, bruh. Yeah. I'm talking about like, not just Levi's and shit, like chick jeans and shit. The shit with the little zippers in the back. Yeah. Man, Unc wore all that Why shit, bruh. Huh? Why? I don't know, bro. We walked outside one morning. He was working on a car. He had a blouse on. Bro, me and my cousin damn near hurt ourselves laughing at this shit, bro. Real talk, bro. He had found like this uh stone wash. She had like these stone wash jeans and this jacket. It was a two-piece, clearly for women. Man, this went and put that shit on like he was LL Cool J. And he walked through the living room and he was walking like Yeah. Man, I'm talking about my whole family. When they hit that corner and came around that, we fell out laughing. He got mad as he stopped at the door and turned around. He said, it's a 70s party, suckers, man. That sh man. Yeah. Like, bro, how you, how you the only in the city that found a costume party to go to? And this what you wore, my Bro, this put on a sweater in the middle of the summer and some tight ass <laughs> jeans and went to the softball game and was looking for this dude. He was like, I came to kill you, mother <laughs> bro, this, nigga was, this nigga was so funny, bro. I promise you. And he wore like a size six shoe, bro. Feet were like this big. That's my Uncle Stone, bro. I, I rest in peace. That was the coldest nigga ever. Damn. But that happened to the Charleston White interview, bro. We, that guy on the app. Oh, y'all got an app? We got a whole app, Oh, bro. nigga, Channel that's Black Access right bro. there. Channel 85, my Channel man. 85. Tell us about the app real quick, man. Man, like, that's where we upload all our exclusive content, mm -hmm. behind the scenes, shows that we're producing, like Broken Play and Trap News and and what I'm leaving out. Don't check out the girls, uh, the poor, poor minds. minds. Yeah. We got, uh, them, them are two of the funniest females in the podcast the game right now. Bro. Man. So they we, are hilarious to me. Bro. Yeah, so we just got the mm -hmm. app, and we wanted to go where we can, like, really own this and still get paid for it because you know YouTube money ain't ain't consistent. They right. flag your shit. Right. They say you're doing too much. They say you know what I mean. It's just up to them where your video can go. You could do 10 million views and 200 next week. Well, well, would, you, would you bring <laughs> Charleston White back? Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. It ain't he didn't hurt nobody feelings. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I, I don't know. <laughs> Most definitely, he can come back. He can always come back and talk shit with me because yeah. I'm gonna let the nigga just go crazy. You was definitely like chill on it. Yeah, what the fuck you do? Yeah. So, yeah. man, I'd have kicked it with Charleston and Dewberry and all them. That wasn't the last time I seen them, bro. Yeah. It ain't no hard feelings, man. I f Charleston. I'm the nigga that hit him and told him to come on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> nah, you know him and Chico at DC, they had the back and forth just because that's what the grown that's how grown men talk to each other. Right about. Some but yeah, man, ain't no hard feelings with nobody. Now with us, right? You know, we've been interviewed a lot of people, and sometimes you put. I done watched a lot of hours of y'all fucking interviews. <laughs> hey, man, say hey, hey, oh, oh, shit. Oh, I'm talking oh, about. Nigga. I didn't watch all this. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> the clip going viral now that said his wife left. Oh, the, yeah, the interview I did. I told yeah. you. I told <laughs> yeah, yeah, the interview with that one. Oh, I watched man. a lot of the Jaguar, right? Yeah, definitely Charleston White. <laughs> Uh, but Jaguar Wright, so that, that's where I was coming from. So when we did the Jaguar Wright interview, the first one we did, right, our, our partner brought it to us, right? We didn't know, we didn't know nothing. You know, we put it out there and it went crazy. Have you Absolutely. ever had a, Have you ever had 
an experience like that where it was like you just interviewed somebody where you thought, uh, and then next thing you know, it's like everywhere on every blog going crazy. You're like, damn, that one. We got crazy. a clip like that right now when Snoop came on there. He's talking about when he met Pam Gray, he passed out. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of places that we've never been placed, you know, like right. I think I seen some a clip from like Entertainment Tonight or something. They picked up on the story. Uh, you know what I mean? It just be, be like, you never know. You right. never, you uh, the Michael Jackson with the deep voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. ended up in a, in a lot of places. Oh, and uh, me and Clayton was on the episode. We were talking about you know mm. rap lyrics that made us laugh, and you know that was just flat out lies. Right. You remember when LL Cool J came on the song and said, they call me Big L.A. <laughs> but nobody ever nobody called you that. Like, ever. LA, ever, bro. And I know, I know for a fact he saw that clip because I saw him and he was kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they did call me that. You know what I mean? Like, he ain't said, it, but that's the energy that he was giving. Hey, you was at the BT Wars, so you seen him, right? Absolutely. That's way bigger person than he Way bigger, I'm like, bro. God damn it. Big Man, big real. like a Ninja Turtle. My <laughs> huge, bro. Hey, God. Yeah, you, yeah. That shit kind of threw me off, but um. LL Cool J was hating like a <laughs> on some of them songs, bro. When it was like, plus he drink too much and smoke too many blunts. What the fuck you got to do with you? Bro, you dirty macking like a mother. Don't you, don't you never talk down on no nigga getting no woman, bro. That was some low down shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, uh, one of the segments on the 85 South show I really appreciate is when y'all brought the pimp. Was it Akeem Ali? Yeah. And he went stupid on the free. I, I don't know if y'all just kicked that off where y'all started letting people perform. But uh, that uh, was 85. one. 85. Yeah. That's another show that we produce in house where we uh, <clears throat> we put the artists with the band yep. and just let them rock out on some, like, you know what I mean? Right. Not a tiny desk, but it's just, we got a hood. We got some hood niggas that know how to play these instruments yeah. for real. And um, that yeah, one was the on. coldest yeah. one, though, bro. He was. I was like, he y'all made me a fan. I never heard of him before. I was like, oh, oh I became cold, a fan. Bro. He been he been dropping some dope shit. Who last was a, week? This week. Who was another like? Um, give me three standout artists that people may have slept on, that then came through there. <clears throat> um, on the eight vibe. On the eight, just specifically y'all's music show. Yeah, the music part of it. Oh, <clears throat> um, trouble. Trouble had a dope ass performance on there. You're talking about Trouble, the one that passed yeah. away? Oh, yeah. man, RP. Yep. School. Rest in peace. Uh, Trouble, yeah, dope ass uh, yeah. 85 episode. Um, OJ the Juice, man. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay. And he had never performed with a band before. Oh, so that's the, the thing? They perf they got to perform with a band? Yeah. Oh, well, that's they, live. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. and I would say, let me see, uh, uh, School It. Mm. Schooly. I think Schooly is a real Atlanta legend who done been through er every era of music in Atlanta, from the swag music to the to the gangster shit. He Schooly been in every era, bro, and he came through it, rocked that motherfucker, bro. Yeah. On some on a whole nother vibe, like yeah, yeah, singing and rapping. <clears throat> Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.